Music Mix. Mix 107.3. Get 2,000 customer cash on the purchase of a new 2018 Sportage at Kia's Light Up the Holiday Sales Event. Good morning, America, on the verge of victory. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act is passed. Overnight, Senate Republicans passed their massive tax cut amid protests. Now the House will vote for final passage this morning so President Trump can deliver on that Christmas promise. How will this bill really affect you? House Speaker Paul Ryan here answering your questions on GMA. Holiday double threat, two storm systems moving in, affecting most of the country. Snow and damaging winds causing accidents from Washington to Texas. And this morning, a flash flood watch across the South. Breaking news, authorities now confirm five American tourists among the dozen killed in this devastating bus crash on their cruise ship vacation. Saved by the doorbell, how a popular app helped the family escape a house fire in the middle of the night. And a dangerous traffic stop caught on body cam. A driver speeding off, dragging a police officer more than half a mile. Live in Times Square, this is GMA with Robin Roberts, George Stephanopoulos, and Michael Strahan. Good morning, America. It is a big day in Washington. Congress set to pass President Trump's tax cut, one of the largest ever. This will affect everyone. Yeah, it certainly will. Lawmakers not getting a whole lot of sleep right now. It was a dramatic night on the Senate floor just before 1 a.m. Eastern. Senate Republicans passed that $1.5 trillion tax bill, promising the most sweeping changes in decades. And the president was up late watching it last night. And of course, he was tweeting, promising he'll hold a news conference this afternoon after the bill passes. Could come right around 1 p.m. Not a single Democrat supports the bill. The public is skeptical. But President Trump and his party are about to score their first big legislative win, heading into Christmas on a high note. And our senior White House correspondent, Cecilia Vega, starts us off with all the latest. Good morning, Cecilia. George, good morning to you. But first, the House has that procedural vote, but this is basically a done deal. There is already excitement here at the White House this morning, while Democrats are calling this an absolute disgrace. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act is passed. With a handshake, the vice president announcing that historic tax vote, a late night vote interrupted by protesters. The Sergeant Arms will restore order in the gallery. Vice President Mike Pence repeatedly urging calm while Democrats were outraged. The Senate Minority Leader scolding Republicans for talking while he had the floor. Can we have order, Mr. President? The Senate will be in order. This is serious stuff. We believe you're messing up America. You could pay attention for a couple of minutes. In the House, it looked like a done deal there, too. Complete with a drop the gavel moment by a beaming Speaker Paul Ryan. This is a good day for America. But their plan hit a last minute snag. The House forced to take a do over vote again today, a procedural move not expected to change the historic outcome. The GOP finally giving President Trump his first major legislative victory. After eight uh, straight years of slow growth and underperformance, America is ready to take off. The White House says President Trump made a promise and kept it. We want to give you, the American people, a giant tax cut for Christmas. And when I say giant, I mean giant. But aides now say that Christmas gift may actually come late. The complicated bill might not make it to the president's desk until after the new year. And they still maintain the billionaire president will be hurt by the new plan, despite the fact that he stands to win big league. The president has said that this tax bill is going to cost him a fortune. That's actually not the case. How does he figure this is going to cost him a lot of money? Look, we expect um, that it likely will, certainly on the personal side, uh, could cost the president a lot of money. But he stands to benefit from pass-through deductions, top-rate tax reduction, estate tax exemption is doubled. He's going to make money on that. But look, again, um, this is a tax plan that we hope benefits all Americans. 
Now, Sarah Sanders did go on to concede that the president's business interests stand to gain from these new tax cuts, but the reality, George, is that his personal wealth will get a big boost, too. Right. Everything we know from his past tax returns, as you pointed out in the press conference yesterday, shows the president's going to get a huge tax cut here. This is also his first big, as we've said, first big legislative victory. He's ending the year on a high note, taking a victory lap early this afternoon. Yeah, they are preparing for some big celebrations here at this White House, perhaps starting with a press conference. The president teased it later this afternoon in the after that House vote. George, we have not had a solo press conference from President Trump here at the White House since February. A lot of questions to ask. There sure will be, and we will be there as soon as the president comes out in the Rose Garden or inside. Cecilia Vega, thanks very much, Paul. Thanks, George. If the bill is signed before the end of the year, as is expected, many Americans could start to see the impact as soon as February in the form of bigger paychecks. Our senior congressional correspondent, Mary Bruce, Bruce is on Capitol Hill with more on what taxpayers can expect. Good morning to you, Mary. Good morning, Paula. Well, this is the most sweeping overhaul to the nation's tax code in a generation, likely to impact almost every single American, which has many this morning wondering how and when will this impact you? Republicans are promising more money is coming to your wallet. Today, we are giving the people of this country their money back. Most households would get a tax cut at first. The bill doubles the standard deduction and the child tax credit. Come February, check your check. The IRS says you could start to see less money withheld from your paycheck as soon as February. But those tax cuts for individuals may not last forever. They're set to expire after just eight years. According to one report, within a decade, most Americans making less than $75,000 a year will likely see their taxes go up, while the most wealthy would continue to see a tax cut. But tax rates for corporations, those are permanent, slashed from 35 down to 21 percent. If you own a home, you can still deduct interest on your current mortgage, but it limits new mortgage interest deductions to $750,000. And you can still deduct your state and local income and property taxes, but that's limited to a combined $10,000, which could hurt those living in high-tax states like New York, New Jersey, and California. Now, if you're concerned about how this bill might impact you, tax experts tell us you might want to consider prepaying some of your 2018 taxes now before this new bill goes into effect. But, Paula, they do say make sure to check with your tax advisor before making any changes here. Good advice. So, Mary, before we let you go, we know this is the tax bill, but what kind of impact would it have on our health care? Yeah, Paula, this bill does repeal the Obamacare individual mandate that all Americans have insurance. That is projected to leave 13 million more Americans without insurance over the next decade. And if healthy Americans opt not to get coverage, that could drive up premiums for others. A little uncertainty there. Mary, thank you for your reporting from Capitol Hill. George? Thanks, Paula. We are joined now by the Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan. Mr. Speaker, thank you for joining us this morning. And congratulations. You're on the verge of a victory you've been working for for most of your adult life. But as you know, a lot of the public still skeptical. New poll out this morning shows more than half of the public is opposed to this plan. What do you say to the doubters? Well, I just think, first of all, thank you very much, George, and, and great to be with you. I think because people have been sort of hit on their TV screens by, by the media and the Democrats that everybody's getting a big tax increase. That's just not the case. Uh, the average median family of four in America is going to get a $2,059 tax cut. Every, the average taxpayer in every income group is getting a tax cut. So I think when people actually see that instead of getting tax increases, they're getting a tax cut, when they see the withholding tables changing in February and seeing more money in their paychecks, when they're seeing the economic growth that will result from, from historic tax reform, I think, I think minds are going to change, and I think people are going to change their view on this. But they've been hit on TV with so many different confusing messages that there's no wonder there's a little confusion surrounding this. Big question from a lot of our viewers, how are you going to pay for it? This is going to increase the deficit, according to the congressional budget uh, scorekeepers, by about a trillion dollars. I know you disagree uh, with that analysis. You think growth is going to pay for it. But what if you're wa wrong? Are you willing to yeah, reverse the cuts? Yeah, sure. No, so, no, that would be the last thing we want to do because there's two things we think are necessary for getting the debt and deficit under control. Spending control, getting spending under control, reforming entitlements and cutting spending, and growing the economy. So this is our, our plan to grow the economy, and we are convinced this will grow the economy. All the scorekeepers say it will grow the economy. It's just a question of degree. But we need to keep focused on the spending side of the ledger as well. And so that, to me, is very important, and we're going to get back on that to make sure that we can get spending under control. But we have to have economic growth. We've got to get people back to work in higher-paying jobs 
If people are working in higher paying jobs, they're paying more taxes, the economy benefits all overall. And so that's what this does. And so we're convinced this is one of the key ingredients to fiscal discipline. The other one, of course, being spending discipline. And that spending has a lot of people concerned as well. The AARP has come out against the tax bill in part because they say it's going to increase the national deficit. And that means $25 billion in cuts to Medicare next year alone. Those Medicare cuts are going to be triggered next Not month. Unless you vote. Though, that, I can just cut you off right there. That's that, you and I know these. I know you used to work here, so you know these budget rules. It's kind of an arcane um, um, rule that, that, that will not occur, and those cuts will not happen. You're, you're, so you're committed to getting to, to reversing Absolutely. those cuts. Yeah, so it's, it's the pay-go system, which is a, a, a rule, by the way, we never favored in the first place, and we will, those cuts will not happen. But, but are, you, are you ruling out any Medicare cuts throughout 2018? Because as you just said, you want to get spending under control, and for you, that's usually men entitlements like Medicare. We're, we're going to fix the pay-go problem, which is an arcane budget um, problem and budget rule. But do we want to get entitlement reform? Of course we do. But the kinds of entitlement reforms I think that we're going to be pursuing are the kinds that help make sure we get people from welfare to work. That's what really we're So you're ruling out spring. Medicare so, cuts next year? Uh, well, there are some provider issues that we may be addressing. As you know, some providers in the Medicare field um, in, in some cases are getting overpaid. We want to make sure that that's being dealt with. But as, as far as you're talking about beneficiaries, we're not focused on that. We're focused on getting people from welfare to work. We're focused on giving states more flexibility in Medicaid. Those are things that we think we can do to, to bring more savings to the budget. More importantly, to get people from welfare to work. And those are the kinds of work that things we're going to be focused on in 2018. This tax cut is about to pass, but so far this year, Congress has failed to fund the Children's Health Insurance Program. That provides health coverage to 9 million American kids. States are already warning that if it's not passed, they're going to be cutting off coverage to these children. Yeah. Will you fund the Children's Health Insurance Program mm -hmm. before heading home for Christmas? Yeah, we will. As you know, the House, we already passed this bill. We passed on November the 3rd a full funding of and a full extension of the CHIP bill. The Senate has not done that. Um, so obviously we would like the Senate to follow through and pass something. Um, we passed an interim measure since we passed the full funding measure and we'll do something once again before the end of the year to make sure that those states don't get hit with, with any CHIP cuts. So the House has already acted twice on this matter. We'll do it a third time if necessary. Lots of speculation you're going to step down as speaker at, at the end of the year. I know you said you're going to be around a long time, but are you committed to running for re-election to your House seat and for speaker? Yeah, look, so I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. I'm so focused on getting our agenda done. On, on questions on way down the line, I'll, I'll address those way down the line. But in the meantime, we've got a lot of work to do. I'm here to stay. I'm not going anywhere. If something changes down the road in the future, I'll address that down the road. But the you future. haven't decided to run for re-election yet? I haven't even, it's not even 2018 yet. So that's something my wife and I always discuss later in the, in the campaign year, something we haven't even discussed yet. So that's something we'll discuss down the road when, we, when the appropriate time comes. Mr. Speaker, thanks for your time this morning. You bet. Thank you, George. He's got about 11 days until 2018, but also Congress, before they go home, they're facing this government shutdown yeah. before the end of the week. They have to fund the government by Friday or the government shuts down. I don't think I've ever seen him look so relieved and happy. He's Big been victory on for the speaker. For a long time. Yeah. So a real smile on his face. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, George, for that. And we're going to turn now to that breaking news and that bus crash in Mexico. We now know at least 12 people were killed, including five American tourists. ABC's Victor Okendo. He's in Miami with the latest. Good morning, Victor. Good morning, Michael. Those tourists were on their way to the Mayan ruins, an excursion there. Many of them passengers on board the Celebrity Equinox ship that left from right here in Miami. We've now learned that five of the people dead are Americans, one victim, a minor. This morning, authorities confirming five Americans among the dozen killed in a bus crash on vacation in Mexico. There were a lot of that people on the, the floor. Vitor Maciel Fontes Jacques was one of the tourists from two World Caribbean ships, the Celebrity Equinox and the Serenade of the Seas. He, along with 32 other cruise ship passengers, were on an excursion to the Mayan ruins about an hour from where the ships docked on the Yucatan Peninsula, four hours south of Cancun. The seat belts were tied below the seats, so uh, no one told us to, to put the seat belts on. But uh, my wife's sister, she saw it. Local hospitals treating at least 18 more victims. Carrie Van Ranchigam from Portland, Oregon, was also on the Royal Caribbean excursion to see those scenic ruins, but she was on a different bus. The whole windshield was gone and the side was smashed. It had fallen sideways, it looked like. Um, 
I think by itself, I think it just ran out of control. We could have easily just been the ones on that bus. Excursions are big draws for cruise goers. Deluxe tours exploring everything from island safaris in St. Kitts. You'll get a chance to see the tropical flora and fauna off-road. To dog sledding in Alaska. Breathtaking views, a heart-racing ride, and more. Royal Caribbean telling ABC News, our hearts go out to all those involved. We're doing all we can to care for our guests, including assisting with medical care and transportation. Mission staff from the United States rushed to Mexico to assess the situation. We've learned that both ships, the Celebrity Equinox and Serenade of the Seas, will continue as planned despite this tragedy. They won't be back in South Florida until later this week. Michael. All right, thank you, Victor, and our prayers are with those families. I imagine Paula. the panic so many are feeling right now. Also this morning, we're learning new details about what may have led to that deadly train derailment in Washington State. Investigators are now trying to determine whether the engineer was distracted by a cell phone or possibly someone else in the car with him. ABC's Clayton Sandell is in DuPont, Washington, with the very latest for us this morning. Good morning to you, Clayton. Hey, good morning, Paula. They have been working nonstop overnight here to clear this scene and reopen this major interstate, but it is painstaking work and it may be shut down for several more days. This morning, emergency crews are using cranes to carefully remove sections of Amtrak 501. Authorities are investigating why the train, on its inaugural voyage from Seattle to Portland, was going 80 miles per hour in a 30 mile per hour zone before it derailed onto Interstate 5, killing three passengers, including Zach Wilhoit and Jim Hamry, both train aficionados. It's a protocol for us to uh, look at all of the cell phone records of all the crew members uh, whenever there is an accident of this type. The NTSB is also asking about another person in the locomotive with the engine a conductor getting familiar with the new route. Now, technology that might have automatically slowed this train down and prevented this accident was installed here, but it wasn't activated. It's called positive train technology. It was supposed to be in place nationwide by 2015, but the NTSB notes that Congress has repeatedly delayed that deadline. It's now to the end of 2018. Paula. That is such an unfortunate angle to the story. Clayton, thanks for your reporting. Michael. Thank you, Paula. And now to that Florida police officer's very close call. You can see it's all caught here on his body camera. Officer John Cusack responding to a call. You see him approach the vehicle. When he gets there, the driver guns the engine. And as you can see, Officer Cusack is somehow propping himself up and hanging onto the car. He held on for about half a mile before he let go when the car slowed down. You see him tumbling there into busy traffic. And after this, there was a brief chase. The driver of the car was taken into custody. And Cusack, the 19-year veteran of the force, he is going to be okay, thank goodness. Brave, that was heroin. brave man, yes, hmm. absolutely. That was such a close call because there were cars, oncoming traffic, there were cars right behind him. Yeah. He's grateful. Scary situation. Very scary. Thank you, Michael. We'll move back to Ginger. Now you got a lot of snow coming out west and the storm moving across the country. That's right, George. More than two feet of snow fell at Stevens Pass, Washington. You can see Snoqualmie Pass picking up the snow, too. I-90 in Washington, not looking good. They're getting the chains ready. Traffic already backing up. So many folks, and I know Thursday and Friday tend to be some very busy days. A lot of people need to pay attention here because we've got this storm that we're tracking kicking up winds in Reno as we speak and then we've got wind alerts that stretch all the way to Southern California and then the winter storm warnings and advisories that go from Wisconsin back through Montana. So this is going to affect a lot of folks as that low comes out of the Rockies tonight through tomorrow. You're going to pick up a couple of inches of snow as it moves through the northern plains and then it's mostly rain and thunderstorms from Dallas to Memphis. If you're traveling Friday afternoon that could affect you Saturday night. It's mostly rain along the East Coast, but interior New England starts to pick up snow. This is how much snow is left behind, and I can promise you severe cold this is our nation by Christmas. Warm Cities Now brought to you by PetSmart. At PetSmart, we're so close to donating 60 million meals to pets in need. That definitely feels good. With your support, we provide meals for pet shelters and food banks to feed hungry pets across the country. This holiday season, buy any bag of dog or cat food at PetSmart. Any brand, any size, and we'll give a meal to a pet in need. 60 million meals. That's so much food. <laughs> PetSmart, for the love of pets. 
Hey, grab a warm jacket heading out the door today. We'll have temperatures in the 50s today, around uh, 50 degrees or so with a mixture of clouds and sunshine. It's going to be a little breezy this afternoon too, and there will be areas north and west where temperatures will be held in the upper 40s for today, and then widespread 40s expected tomorrow with some wind. Our wind chills will be in the 30s. Only one day now with rain for the holiday weekend, and that's going to be on Saturday. Coming up, Harvey Weinstein's former assistant is telling her story on camera for the first time. She says she was harassed.